Welcome back. Last week, Michigan Congressman Fred Upton, one of 10 House Republicans who voted to impeach Donald Trump, became the fourth to announce that he's going to retire. Five more are being primaried from the right by candidates Trump has endorsed. California's David Valadeo is the only exception so far. After Upton announced his retirement, Trump released this statement, writing, Upton quits, four down, six to go. Congressman Fred Upton joins me now. Fred, good to see you. Nice to see you always. Uh, let me start with what you told my colleague Vaughn Hilliard. You said, this is on March 30th, not that long ago, you said that the possibility of the perception of giving Trump a win by retiring was actually a motivator to run again. And yet, you're, you're deciding not to run. Did you give Trump a win? Uh, no, we didn't. I don't think we did. No, it would have been a doozy of a campaign. I would have loved it. Uh, I like campaigns. <laughs> I really you do. You wanted Trump liked, involved? You were ready to take I was them on? ready to go, but okay. the, the final straw was they redrew the district. So my hometown, my home community, faces Lake Michigan. I can actually see it across the street where I live. It's a lot of it now is with Lake Erie. So it's literally 250 miles away, uh, about 350,000 different voters than I had before. And so that was the final. When you the test judges, drove the campaign, though. You, you paid for some TV uh, advertising. Yep, we were you ready. You did seem to test we were, drive it. We were did, ready. Did you travel this new district? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. No, I did. And we would have been welcomed in a, in a lot of different places. But we would have had to raise, I don't know, five, six million bucks mm -hmm. a couple of months. I, I could have done that. But at the end, uh, you know, it's time for family. I got three grandkids now. One of them is actually saying... There's Papa. He's two years old. He's watching right now. Uh, I am curious what you think is going to happen to a Republican-controlled Congress next year. Don Bacon, who's a colleague of yep. yours, he's a Republican from Omaha, he, he said this, we can't have this mindset of burn the house down. We've got to be a governing party when we're in the majority, so we need people like Upton and folks like that so other people have to step up. Uh, look, you regularly vote to keep the government open, and you're usually in the minority, and I believe the last time the debt ceiling was raised, I think now there's only going to be 33 members left. Maybe even less. Uh, who voted for it left in Congress. I mean, uh, do you fear we're going to that these House, this next House Republican majority could lead us to default? Well, a lot depends upon what happens in November. Uh, I do believe that the House is going to flip. In fact, I talked to Charlie Cook earlier this morning, and uh, he, I think he believes that as well. The math is hard to overcome. What is going to be the margin, though? Is it going to be better than Pelosi? I think it will a little bit better than what it is today for, for her. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be this wild swing, knowing that we picked up a lot of seats in the last election despite Biden winning. So... You know, what's the over-under? Uh, so that's, that's going to make a big determination. So a small majority, does that make it more likely if it's a smaller trouble. Republican majority? Yeah. You think that's trouble. more trouble? More trouble. Which is why, then, the Problem Solvers Caucus, I'm one of the vice chairs mm -hmm. there, is so important as we try to have some glue to, or fabric to really move forward on issues that we got to deal with, whether it be immigration, whether it be energy, whether it be inflation, all those different... Uh, death ceiling, obviously, is going to be an early, early test in the next Congress. You got death threats for voting for infrastructure spending. I did. You played these voicemails. We <laughs> played these voicemails. That's No, I... In some ways, it is, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it made it easier to say, I'm out. Yeah, well, death threats, I mean, they, they never were like we had this, this last year, but it was pretty crazy. And remember, that was a Republican bill. I mean, literally a year ago, this week, yeah. Governor Hogan brought a bunch of us up to his place in Annapolis... Republicans, Democrats, senators, governors, House members, both sides of the aisle. Mm. We defined what infrastructure ought to be, and we decided how to pay for it. And it passed 69 to 30 in the Senate. It was the issue all last summer. Lindsey Graham, Trump's best friend, voted for it. So if you're getting death threats, what's the likelihood of somebody watching what happened to you and going, yeah, I, 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 forget it, I'm not going to yeah, vote? You know what? It's going to be a detriment getting good people. Uh, to run. It really will be because I got a school board member that lives on my street. I think he got death threats too just over the, the mask mandate. So we, we, we have a story out of Georgia where they can't find anybody to be the elections person in Fulton County. Yeah, because oh, I believe it. I believe it. It's, you know, it's, it puts you at risk, particularly when they threaten not only you, and I'm, I like to think I'm pretty fast, but mm -hmm. when they threaten your spouse or your kids or, or whatever, that's what really makes it frightening. Um, let me ask about if the Republicans are going to run on anything, and I'm curious what you would have done. Uh, while Kevin McCarthy says that the Republicans should run on an agenda this yeah, cycle. I think they should. All right. Here's what Mitch McConnell said. If Republicans take back control of Congress after the midterms, what would be your agenda? That is a very good question. 
and I'll let you know when we take it back. As a political strategist, it's probably the right call. It's a lot easier to win an election by running against somebody than being for anything. But isn't this what's wrong with our politics? Yeah, you have to be for something. And I think what Kevin has done, eight or nine different working groups and a whole bunch of different subjects, whether it be high tech or China or deficit or, you know, energy, is a good thing. And I was around. Remember, I was Newt's deputy whip, one of his deputy whips back in 94. Mm -hmm. That's when we came up with the contract with America. That was the huge effort. We didn't say we we're going to necessarily pass them, but it was going to be an agenda item for the next 100 days. I, I didn't actually vote for all of them, but I signed the contract that we ought to have a debate, and some of them became law. Can Kevin McCarthy uh, both represent you and Marjorie Taylor Greene? He can if he gets the margin. <laughs> That's why this over-under number is so important. Are yeah. we going to be over-under 230? If it's under 230... You don't think it, he's, it you think be, he may not become speaker if it's under it 230. It will be right? very hard to govern for Republicans if we're under 230, knowing that we've got the MTG element that's uh, really not a part of a governing majority. We've had wild types of members of Congress since the history of this report. Always have. Okay. But if you, can you... Do you remember Jim Trafficking? Oh, yeah. Look, beam me up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Lauren Boebert. And Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar, is that a different element than you've ever seen before? Um, I don't think we've had so as many folks in that sort of wing of the party mm -hmm. elected as we have before. But th I think they're very popular back at home. Yeah. I mean, what, what does that tell you? About, I mean, she be, What does that tell you about the Republican Party? Troubled waters, I guess you could say. And that's why the margin is going to be so, you know, right now, look. Pelosi's got the votes, uh, particularly with the use of the proxy vote. She's not going to lose a vote. And I don't think she really has in uh, the mm -hmm. last year and a half. We're not going to have proxy votes. Kevin has made that very clear. None of us uh, want that to happen. Uh, and it was put in place really because of the COVID right. uh, issue. But a lot determines on what that level is going to be. And you'll be, I'll be watching you on uh, in November. I, I don't mean to throw it very quickly be. at you. You were just in the region of Ukraine. Let me just a simple question. Is the United States doing enough to help Ukraine? We have to do everything we can. Let me just tell you, the Ukraine folks, so brave, they are fighting for us. Yeah. It was a bipartisan trip that I went on. We have to make sure that they have every tool to make sure that they can survive. It sounds like you think we can do a little bit more. We can. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.